Hey, I'm BMOC. You're now tuning to BMOC.TV. To discuss this album and other music topics, check out our new Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash BMOCTV. So today I want to talk about the brand new album from Lil Boosie, Boosie Badass, whatever you want to call them. It's called Touchdown to Cause Hell. Now as most of my hip hop and music heads know, Lil Boosie was incarcerated for a few years. So this album is like his reintroduction back into the music scene. And to kind of compensate a little bit for the time he's been gone, the album has like 19 songs. So I can't touch on every one of the songs. It's a, it's a huge album. But I want to get into some of the tracks that really kind of stood out to me. So starting with the intro, you know, he definitely doesn't hold anything back. Uh, the, the beat is banging. He's coming through full force. Just really announcing his return to the music scene. I think he had a, a few tracks he released after prison. But this is like his first official album. So his intro was like the intro to this brand new project, this brand new release. Then after the intro, we get to a track called Window of My Eyes, which is very introspective. Basically taking you into his world once he was incarcerated, as far as his feelings of him being in there and not being able to see his family, friends he thought were his friends because he was popping in the music industry. So all these feelings of kind of being like trapped, not just within a confined space, but within his body, within his soul. And I really dig they starting off the album like this. You know, if you don't know Boosie's catalog, you would think, oh, he's just a dance, happy, write me down MC. But in reality, he really gives you substance. So I'm glad he started off the track with something that's as honest as this. Then we get into a track called Mercy On My Soul. This is by far one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, I'm loving that the song is pretty much like a prayer to God asking forgiveness for the things that he's done or the things that he's going to do, um, which is really dope. Great verse for Young Jeezy. You know, Jeezy's one of my favorites um, from the South. He never disappoints. It was definitely genius bringing both these guys together on this record. Then we get into a song called Like A Man featuring Rich Homie Kwan. It's, you know, it's okay. I'm sure a lot of people who are feeling the Rich Homie Kwan vibe would dig it. Not really something that kind of really drew me in, so to speak. Um, I like some of the other songs on the record better, but it's, it's okay. And that's the same way I felt about On Deck featuring Young Thug. Again, if you're a Young Thug fan, I'm sure you will appreciate it. You know, the beat is banging. You know, Boosie does his thing. I just feel like I've heard it somewhere before. So, you know, not a, not a bad song, just wasn't really my taste. Then we get into No Juice which is another another favorite. Very, very catchy. Like I was saying in the hook before the song ended, which is dope. Production was, was on point. You know, I could definitely hear like a Drake do some type of a, a remix to this. Maybe even a Beyonce, an R&B remix. So not, not in this universe, Beyonce's gonna jump on a, boost, a Boosie song, but you never know, it, it, it could happen. But very, very catchy. Definitely a single worthy song. Then that track's followed by a song called On That Level, featuring Webby. Now as we all know, or some of you may know, you know, Lil Boosie and Webby are in the same camp. So it's definitely that tag team partnership which I expected on this album. And if you like to wipe me down, this is like the wipe me down remix. So definitely wasn't surprised this was one of the first singles. Then we get to a song called Hip Hop Array, where Boosie's kind of almost paying homage to the original Hip Hop Array by Naughty by Nature. And on this record, it sounds like Boosie's coming at MCs, they think does it have substance, who are saying the same things on the radio time and time again, doing the same thing in the same videos, like Suge Knight, all in the videos, all on the record. But Boosie's kind of challenging them, challenging MCs and other artists to really like step up their game. Since he's been gone, he hasn't really heard anything, I guess, as groundbreaking, or maybe he feels more MCs aren't being groundbreaking. So, you know, with a song like this, you can definitely tell he's coming and speaking from the heart, which is dope. Then after that, we get to Mr. Miyagi, which is almost like a part two, because Hip Hop Array, he's telling MCs, you know, what they should be doing. Mr. Miyagi's kind of saying, you know, this is what I've done for other people around me. You know, I've got a kind of compared to Karate Kid. You know, Mr. Miyagi trains Daniel's son, uh, you know, the wipe on, wipe off. Y'all seen Karate Kid, right? Okay. But this is a very, you know, fun record, even though he's talking about things that he's done to help others around him. It's still, you know, very clever, very catchy. I could have heard T.I., you know, kind of his flow on this as well as a feature. But, you know, cool, cool track. Then we get to a song called Black Heaven, which I think is really video, radio single worthy, featuring the Coles, um, Keisha Cole and J. Cole. And it's a song where he's pretty much, you know, paying homage to all the deceased black musicians, influential leaders in our community and our culture, which is really, really classy on his part. Keisha Cole handles most of the hook, and then J. Cole has a little B section hook part in the song. I would have loved to hear a J. Cole full verse. J. Cole, why you keep doing this, man? Uh, J. Cole did the same thing 
big on Wale's album. We did one of the songs. We did like a hook he ain't come. And I was like, yo, J. Cole, I need you in the, those verses, man. I, I love J. Cole's verses. Um, so, but yeah, you know, he, dope. Dope, dope song. You know, great full collaboration. Um, you know, maybe J. Cole may release a version where he has a full verse. I don't know. But, you know, J. Cole's one of my favorites. So, I would love to hear Cole on this. But, overall, great, great song. Then we get into a record that was kind of unexpected. Well, I didn't expect it. It's a song called She Don't Love Me featuring Chris Brown. And it's actually a song where Boosie's talking about, you know, being in a relationship and how that works. You know, sidebar, I gotta give Lil Boosie credit for trying to make a well-balanced album. I mean, he goes from, you know, being incarcerated to, you know, a prayer to God to, you know, the club happy records to the, the Trump banger record to, you know, praising influential leaders and now a relationship song. I mean, he's really trying to make a really well-balanced album, so you gotta give him props for that. And on this track, you know, Chris Brown doesn't disappoint. Boosie's versus the solid. The production is crazy. I definitely would love to hear more collaborations from them. I wouldn't have matched up, you know, Boosie and Chris Brown, but it works. Then right after that, you have Spoil You featuring T.I., which is radio ready to go right now. I don't know. You know, Boosie makes songs particularly for radio, or he kind of just makes music and it just kind of falls wherever it falls. But, you know, again, Radio worthy. I love Boosie and T.I.'s collaboration. Really dope. Then we get into a track called How She Got Her Name, which is a really great display of storytelling for Boosie. On one verse, he's talking about a girl who gets caught up in the life of like athletes and celebrities, and she gets like an STD. Another story about a girl who like sets up guys to get robbed as her profession, and then you know she gets a guy you know robbed and he comes back and kills her. And another track, it was a girl who's messing with another musician or whoever and she's still getting like AIDS or HIV. I thought it was very creative, you know, had a lot of great substance. Again, loving Boosie saying for artists to kind of dig deeper into their music and he's taking the lead on that as far as being the example. So kudos to him. Dope track. Make sure you check that one out. Then after that, we get into a song called Hands Up, which he specifically name drops Trayvon Martin and Mike Brown. And he's also talking about not just those two men, but just the other black men around this country who've been getting killed, you know, unnecessarily by the police. Really well done, very classy. It's always well respected that somebody like Boosie would come out and make a song like this because, you know, the media will blow over certain events and we won't talk about them as much. So for him to make it, you know, a full song about it, putting on a new album to still put the spotlight on it, I thought was really clever and dope. Then to close out the album, Boosie brings everything back full circle with a song called I'm Sorry. We pretty much tell his family that he's sorry for his mistakes and the decisions that he made that put him in prison. And I really love the honest side of him, you know, saying, you know, this is a, a public message to all my loved ones, my friends, people who roll with me, that I'm sorry, I've learned from my mistakes, and I'm sorry you had to go through that pain of, of seeing me be incarcerated and me being locked down. So I'm here and I'm going to make better changes in the future. So overall, that was a really well-rounded album, a really solid project from Boosie. You know, they run a little long with 19 songs. You could have taken it off maybe like two or three. It would probably be a little perfect, perfect album. But you know, I know he was gone for a while, being incarcerated. He wants to give as much content as possible to his fans and the public, so I definitely understand. But maybe just like two or three, it would have been just right on point. But again, really, really great job. Um, multiple subjects, lots of substance, great content. Really, really cool. If you're not used to Boosie's voice, that may throw you off, just his accent a little bit. But, you know, really listen to the album and listen to what he's trying to say. You know, I think if what people say, artists aren't putting out well-rounded projects, not putting a lot of thought into their music, you don't have something for everybody, I think this album will kind of prove those people wrong. Um, so just, you know, give it a spin. It may be your taste, may not be your taste, but I think he did a really good job trying to bring all elements of emceeing and artistry together for this. So now I wanna hear what you guys think. You know, what did you think about the first few singles that came out? What do you think about the album if you heard it? Please put it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. So thanks again guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it as always. For deeper discussions, please join our brand new Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash BMOC TV. Also, if you like this review, check out my last review. It was on Jamie Foxx's brand new album, Hollywood, A Story of a Dozen Roses. You can also check out my recent music video where I did an iPad matchup of Beyonce, Missy Elliott, and Queen Latifah called 511. You can check that out right now. I drop videos every week, so please make sure you check back to youtube.com slash BMOC TV. Please subscribe or BMOC.TV. I'm BMOC. Peace.